Hey, it's all with another video. It's time. It is finally time to take a look at Paladins and Antorus, the Burning Throne. This is kind of a refresher from the previous 7.3 video. There's not a whole lot that's changed, but I figure that, you know, you know, maybe we should get a kind of refresher as to what's going on now. How's the tier doing? How are the trinkets? And of course, do prop Paladins still suck more than most of the other tanks? Let's find out. First off, the 7.3.2 patch is out, and we had a bit of an HP bump. Paladins were given a little bit of love, which equates to roughly 500,000 or so HP. What does that mean? Nothing. Paladins still have a really low HP pool compared to the other tanks. It does kind of blow being towards the bottom in that regard, but let's not forget fellow Paladins, that's what Ladder the Protector's for, right? So let's see how the tier 21 set is looking. Unfortunately, nothing's changed since then. The two-piece bonus will give us a 10% bonus to our block rating, our 4-piece will give us an additional 10% to our block rating as long as our active mitigation isn't up. So going for 2-piece is kind of a no-brainer, it's a pretty big boost to our block rating. So on our way to get that 2-piece bonus, we're probably going to break our 4-piece tier 20 if we don't have that already. It was okay, but it's not that great, I mean it's pretty much a passive 5% damage reduction, but for the additional stats that we get from the tier 21 along with that 2-piece bonus, I think 4-piece is something that we can afford to say goodbye to. Going for 4 piece tier 21 though is really, really debatable. Because going for just that additional 10% block will cause a lot of changes to the way that will approach your gearing strategy. If you haven't gone this route with the stats already, you'll be pushing pretty hard for haste and mastery since versatility is, for the most part, going to sit on our concordance procs anyway. With my current gear on the PTR along with the holy shield talent, I can hit about 70% block with 4 piece. And that's still pretty good, but it leaves holes in my defense. The question is, is that extra 10% block really worth it? Is 60% block okay? Now I can see what Blizzard's trying to do. They want to discourage the notion of having as close to 100% uptime as possible on your active mitigation. Which other tanks can pull off, but for Paladins, eh, it's pretty much impossible. Speaking for myself though, I never bought into that idea anyway. I've always said that your active mitigation should be at 100% when it matters, meaning to not care so much about boss auto attacks. But just getting another 10% block rating for 4-piece, it's boring. Just like how 4-piece tier 20 was. So one possible gearing strategy includes getting 4-piece tier 21 and 2-piece tier 20. So that'll get me my 70% block, but I'll still have my 2-piece tier 20. And the 2-piece bonus is really powerful. The really big drawback is that I'm going to lose out on my flexibility with legendaries. With this sort of build, I'd plan on rocking the Soul of the High Lord ring because not having Blessed Hammer at this point, if at this point it's not an option, it just feels really good. But not being able to use Tyleka's legs or the Siren's Resolve helmet, that doesn't sound very good either. I like having the extra utility of the double heal, and I really like the extra DPS and mitigation that the extra bulwark of the Order procs get me. The other solution would be to just settle. Having the two-piece bonus from tiers 20 and 21 might be a little bit better. And that gives me the flexibility of using Tyleka's legs, Siren's Resolve, or even the Pillars of Light, the shoulders. The only gripe that I have with this sort of approach is that I'm still kind of tethered to the previous tier. Depending on how your gear setup is, it might be a good idea for you to go back to the previous raid. Maybe try to farm either the Mythic or a Titanforge version of the piece that you need. So it's going to be kind of a mess. You'd want to have certain legendaries on hand, you want to have certain high level tier 20. So it's probably going to be a little bit inelegant when it comes to your gearing this tier. Now let's move on to the trinkets, which I found to be a little bit more fun this time around. We'll start off with the Eye of Farg and the Eye of Shatug. This right here is a special set that both tanks will be wearing. One gives strength and bonus armor, the other gives stam and versatility. If both of the tanks are wearing either trinket, you get a nice little bonus. And you can switch from one to the other to make sure this special set bonus works. The bonus though is pretty boring. Personally, I don't care about it at all. I say use the one that fits best for you. You might be tempted to go for the extra HP. And at this point, I probably wouldn't be mad about it. We just don't have a lot of life. And this trinket will give Protection Paladins an extra 600,000 life. This isn't a bad trinket to start off with, especially since this drops off one of the early bosses. But I think there are better ones you can have instead. The Apocalypse Drive is a non-use that reduces melee damage for up to 20 seconds. It has a 2 minute cooldown, but taking melee attacks reduces its cooldown by 1 second. This one seems just kind of okay. It mitigates a good bit of damage, it lasts pretty long, and if whatever you're fighting does mostly melee attacks, then you can probably count on the cooldown of this trinket to be like, ah, a minute 30 or so. But this trinket shines a lot more when it comes to tanking multiple adds that also do melee attacks. So this might not be bad in Mythic Plus situations if you're tanking multiple mobs that might swing slow, but for single target fights it might not be as efficient. But it's not automatically the worst trinket to have either. 
Dima's Glacial Aegis is pretty interesting, although it's, it, it's a little bit contradictory. Here's why. The cool things include that it gives you a decent armor buff, it only has a 1 minute cooldown, and it does a reasonable amount of damage to enemies around you. The slow is a little bit weird though. I mean, you have an armor debuff, but at the same time you have a slow debuff. If you have a slow debuff on the enemy, wouldn't you just kind of want to kite them around? Which sort of negates the need for the armor in the first place. At the same time, this buff is based on armor. Similar to the Apocalypse Drive, this will take care of physical attacks, but not so much for magical stuff. But between this and the Apocalypse Drive, I'd probably rather take the Aegis. The Rift World Codex is probably the winner. This one's easily my favorite trinket because of just the chaotic things that it can do. So from testing, there are three kinds of effects that benefit your character. One is a heal over time. It's not much, but it's something. It can bubble you, and it's worth a few million HP, which I'd say is better than the hot. Or you get a buff where you explode, dealing shadow flame damage to enemies around you. For the damage that it does, 300% of that damage is returned to you. So depending on the number of things that you're tanking, this thing can potentially heal you back up to full life every tick. And it does a pretty decent amount of damage too. So I like this one. It has a mix of direct healing, absorption, and dealing decent AoE damage. If there's anything you want to save a bonus roll for, I would say this one. The last of the normal trinkets is the Smoldering Titan Guard. This is an on use that gives you a pretty insane damage shield. It lasts for 3 seconds and once it expires it makes fire spew out in several directions and it does quite a bit of damage to everything around you. The small problem is that when you use it for those 3 seconds you can't move or use any other abilities. So that makes this trinket pretty situational. You would need to pre-plan exactly when you want to use this trinket. So you would typically reserve this for a period where you're going to take extremely heavy damage or if you're trying to cheese and damage soak something. The other would be if you're in like a mythic keystone situation and you're pulling everything at once and you just want to pull the whole room and AoE the crap out of everything. This would be one solution. Out of all these trinkets though, in fact out of all these trinkets in the entire expansion, you know depending on if you have a titan forged one, you're only going to be able to choose one. And that's because of the two pantheon trinkets that are available for you. Agamar's Conviction drops off the last boss in the raid. This is the tank specific one. Gives you strength and basically gives you another Concordance of the Legion fall buff. And that's not bad. When this trinket is powered by the Pantheon though, and the requirements for that include needing to be in the Antorus raid itself, and you need three other people to proc their own unique Path of the Titans procs in order for this to occur, you get an extra 1.6 million life for 15 seconds and you're healed to full. And personally, I think this sucks. 1.6 million life is not a small amount of life, but it's only 1.6 million life. Being healed to full is great when I want it to happen, but when I don't have control over it, what is it worth really? So personally I'd rather go for Amenthul's Vision. This gives me a bunch of secondaries and on proc it gives me every tertiary stat. Getting the extra speed isn't a big deal, but getting the extra avoidance and leech, that sounds pretty good. The Pantheon proc gives me an extra 6700 strength for 15 seconds, which is okay, but it's not something I'm really going to rely on. So trinket wise, if I can get away with it, I would use Amanthul's Vision and the Rift World Codex. It doesn't give me a lot of control like the Leviathan's Hunger did, but both of these have a high proc per minute. So I think that over the course of the fight, along with how I set my two piece bonuses and my legendaries, I think I'll be in a good spot. And finally, there's the last legendary, the Insignia of the Grand Army. This is kind of what I'd call the RNG Enhancement Legendary. Now as far as we know, we're going to get this in a quest line, but as far as the effectiveness of this ring, it's going to be really dependent on what kind of traits we have in our Crucible. Basically, if they're good, they're good, and if they're bad, they're pretty bad. It's cool that it has mastery, but this is probably not something that I'd prioritize wearing. At least not unless I have like three of the same trait. So as for my thoughts on the Paladin and how they're going to be in Antorus, you may be wondering how the Paladin's going to pair up against the other tanks, and I want to say that will be okay. The new 2-piece bonus and, I guess to a lesser extent, the 4-piece bonus help to mitigate some of the issues that we're having with those issues that we have when our active mitigation isn't up. Depending on how you decide to allocate your sets and your legendaries, you might have a pretty good cushion that allows you to get some flexibility even if your active mitigation isn't ever really 100%. The tanking trinkets are a little bit more fun than they were in previous tiers. It kind of sucks that one trinket slot pretty much has to be taken by one of the Path of the Titan trinkets, but at least I have the flexibility to choose one or the other, whichever is more fun for me. So that's it for this video. I'm not the best protection paladin out there, but if this helped, great. Like this video and support the channel the best way you know how. If you have additional thoughts, tips, or corrections to make, hey, feel free to put them in a the comment below. Otherwise, you all have a good one. Stay safe, stay happy and stay breezy.